Betaflight 4.2 might be the best flying version of Betaflight ever, but ever since Betaflight 4.2. What are you doing? What is that? It's a giant stick. What are you doing? Okay, bye. I'm not gonna take it. All right, see ya. Betaflight 4.2 might be the best flying version of Betaflight ever released, but it is not perfect. Ever since 4.2 came out, people have been asking, why does my quad like wobble when I drop the throttle all the way? And today we're gonna demonstrate that. And then we're gonna go through a whole bunch of different ways to fix Betaflight 4.2 low throttle instability. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something to, what are you doing? What are you doing with that stick? It's humongous. What are you do? <laughs> Let's just start with a demonstration of the problem. And it's gonna be very easy to demonstrate. My, uh, yeah. We're just gonna climb and then drop the throttle and watch the horizon. It's not as bad as it could have been. Could have been. Let's see if we do more aggressive moves where we get some bobbling. We didn't really get much bobbling here. Nope, it's rock solid. Well, I guess we're just gonna fly. Mm. Cool. We're on a different quad now. We're gonna see if we can actually get it to do the thing. Mamba, come here. Good boy. And in order to do that, we're just gonna take off and then lower the throttle. That's pretty solid too. Well, here's what we're gonna do. I'm not going through all my quads until I find one that reproduces this problem. And actually, I kinda don't feel too bad about that. I mean, like I always wanna include flight video if I can, so I feel a little bad. But the truth is that Everybody's quad has this problem for maybe a different reason and solves the problem maybe in a different way. So I'm gonna show you all of the possible ways that I know of to solve this problem and suggest an order to try them in. And even if one of them was to fix one of my quads, we would still go through all the others anyway. So let's just do it on the bench. Now, the first thing that I would suggest you do to tame low throttle instability is turn off the D min setting. What D min does is it lowers the D term down when the quadcopter is stable and not like in a sharp turn or doing a flippy flop. The idea is that the D term is mostly needed when the quad is moving quickly to prevent overshoot and bounce back. And having a high D term when the quad is just cruising straight and level makes the motors hot, it introduces vibrations, maybe uh, video noise, other problems, and it's just not needed. So when you have D-min enabled, the PID controller reduces the D-gain when the quad is flying straight and level, and then cranks it back up again when you start banging the sticks. And when D-min is tuned perfectly, it works great, but it isn't tuned perfectly for everybody. And by simply disabling D-min, the D-term then stays high all the time and that actually can help stabilize the quad in response to those low throttle instabilities. Now, there is a trade-off here. If you have a quadcopter that is on the edge of having too much vibration or too, too high D gain, turning off D-min can cause your motors to go from cool to warm or maybe warm to hot. The purpose of D-min is to cool the motors down and Anyway, so you, but a lot of people aren't going to have that problem. And in fact, I turn D min off on all of my quads unless I'm specifically trying to tame a problem with a quadcopter that has hot motors, then I turn it on. But I find that adding the, the additional uncertainty of the dynamic D term can sometimes cause more problems than it solves. So turn off D min. If your motors are still cool, proceed.
Now, if turning off D-min helps the quad stability by raising the D-gain slightly, couldn't we also just raise the D-gain? Yes, in fact. And that is another thing that sometimes helps uh, with this problem. So in Betaflight 4.2, the easiest way to increase the D-gain is just to go to the PD balance slider. And when you move the PD balance slider, notice that the D term changes while the P term stays still. By the way, in Betaflight 4.1 and earlier, it moved the P term and left the D term alone. But we're talking about 4.2, so we don't need to worry about that. So what you can do is you can just crank the, the PD balance up to about 1.2, and you usually don't need to go any higher than that. You could also try playing with the PD gain, which will raise both the P and the D term, but the first thing I would suggest doing is just raise the PD balance to 1.2, and then do a couple of those throttle punches where you drop the throttle and let the quad fall and see if that helps with the stability. The next way to deal with low throttle instability in Betaflight 4.2 is not in Betaflight, but in BL Heli. And specifically, we're assuming that you've got a BL Heli 32 ESC. And the reason for that is if I connect and read setup, you'll see that BL Heli 32 gives you the option to change your ESC PWM frequency. And this ESC, this is the Holy Bro ESC that can actually go up to 96 kilohertz. Typically, you can only raise it up to 48K. Oh, this one only goes down to 48K. Most ESCs go from 24 to 48K. Some of them go up to 96K. If you don't have BL Heli 32 and you're using BL Heli S ESCs, you can flash JESC Jazz Maverick or BL Heli M firmware, and those will also let you change the PWM frequency uh, in the same way. What what is the PWM frequency? Well, when the ESC drives the motor, it doesn't put a, a varying voltage through the motor. It actually uses a PWM signal, which is going from full battery voltage to zero volts, and it spends a certain percentage of a time at full voltage and a certain percentage of time at zero volts. And the more time it spends at full voltage, the higher the average voltage that's being used to drive the motor. And that's, that's basically what PW pulse width modulation is. The frequency is how often it switches from battery voltage to zero volts. So it could go, uh, uh, or it could go, ah, mm, ah, mm, ah, mm, ah, mm. one of those is a higher frequency, but they could both have the same average duty cycle. They could both be at full voltage 50% of the time, but one's going to have, one's, the, higher, the higher PWM frequency is going to be smoother. It's going to be smoother on the motors. That's why you go to a higher frequency. And in fact, I've been telling people for years now that you, especially if you fly freestyle and you want the smoothest possible motors, you should run 48K PWM frequency. But in Betaflight 4.2 highlights a deficiency of going to a higher PWM frequency. And that is higher PWM frequencies have less torque. And that is especially true at low throttle. At high throttle, when the motor is just spinning super fast, it doesn't matter as much what PWM frequency you're using. And in fact, a higher PWM frequency is going to be a little bit smoother, but the motor is going to have plenty of torque regardless. But at low throttle, when the motor is spinning very slowly, a lower PWM frequency has more torque. A higher PWM frequency has less torque. And that explains why the lower PWM frequency can sometimes fix this problem with Betaflight 4.2 low throttle instability because when you go down to low throttle, the quad is unstable and the motors have to change speed abruptly to fix that, but because they lack torque, they can't change speed quickly enough. To sum up, you might be able to solve this problem by lowering your PWM frequency from 48 down to 24 or from 96 down to 48. A lot of people don't like this answer because higher PWM frequency is smoother and especially freestyle pilots want the smoothest possible motors. So I'm telling you that this works, but I'm also telling you, you might want to try some of these other things like messing with the D gain and the D min and see if you can get away with staying on 48K. The next way to deal with Betaflight low throttle instability requires us to go into the command line. And this one I feel pretty conflicted about because on the one hand, it is it seems to be one of the most consistent ways to solve this problem, but it has a downside, a big downside. The, the, the parameter we're looking for is called thrust linear. And the default value is zero, which means it's disabled. 
And what thrust linear does is it is like it's like an inverse TPA curve. Oh, you, some of you were like, oh, that, that really helped. What it does is when motors are at low throttle, they don't make a lot of thrust. And then as you increase the throttle and you increase the RPM, the amount of thrust the motor makes goes up. But that is a nonlinear relationship. Um, adding 10% RPM doesn't add 10% thrust. And then as the motor gets faster and faster, the thrust it creates goes up. What thrust linear does is it tries to create a linear thrust output from the motor as opposed to a linear RPM output from the motor. So when the PID controller says, give me 10% throttle, instead of getting 10% more RPM, it gets 10% more thrust. And that is most noticeable at the bottom of the RPM range at the bottom of the throttle when the motor doesn't make a lot of thrust. Another way to put what thrust linear does is it boosts the PIDs when the throttle is low. That's why it's like an inverse TPA. So what people have suggested doing is try setting set thrust linear equals 20. What does that mean? It's a it's a 20% boost. Um, you can watch UAV Tech's video about thrust linear if you want to know like a more in-depth black box analysis of what it's actually doing. But set thrust linear equals 20 or maybe 25. And then type save, obviously. You, you got to type save for that to take. Now here's the problem. That will actually do a great job of solving this, but it boosts the PIDs at low throttle. And it boosts, depending on the thrust linear value you choose, it boosts the crap out of them, which means that when you're flying and you hit something with the throttle down, the quad freaks out. So if you're doing like a low throttle dive and, and you smack some smack a tree branch or a stump, it goes and it freaks out. Or I had one situation where I ended up upside down on the roof of my barn and the motors just went, Wah! and I just stuck upside down on the roof of my barn. I've had the quad, I've had a quad, uh, Ciotti built me a quad, then he tuned the quad and said, here, try this out. And one of the things he did is he cranked up the thrust linear. It flies really good and it is rock solid stable. You can go crazy on the throttle and the horizon doesn't move. But then like you tap something at low throttle and it freaks out. So I'm really conflicted about this one. And if you decide to play with it, then it, you know, it's on you, but know that there is a downside to it. I've heard that the Betaflight devs are working on something even better for Betaflight 4.3 that kind of is the best of both worlds, and I'm kind of looking forward to that. You know, a really simple solution to this problem where the quad lacks stability at low RPMs is to just prevent the motors from ever going to low RPMs. Yep, here in the configuration tab, you could just raise the motor idle value from 5.5, which is the default, to 7% or maybe even 8 or 9%. There are some obvious downsides to that. And like, for example, your inverted hang time will be reduced because the motors will be pulling you down to the ground. When you do a low throttle move, instead of kind of gracefully following the track of the quad's motion, the quad will pull itself because its motors are spinning at 10%. It'll pull itself offline. Like you can get in a situation where you try to do like a knife edge and you go to zero throttle and you try and like knife edge through the gap. But instead of going through the gap, your motors pull you offline and stuff. So freestyle pilots especially try to avoid having motor idle too high. But raising motor idle will help solve this problem. There is a workaround to that. Here in the PID tuning tab, there is a dynamic idle value. Uh, and this, I have a whole video about dynamic idle, but basically it lets you have a dynamic idle speed so that the motors don't stall, but they can also go to a lower value when they need to, but then they will also kind of boost themselves up to a higher value when they need to. Some people have said that dynamic idle is the best of both worlds. You get stability at low throttle, but you don't get that pulling yourself offline effect Personally, I have tried to set up dynamic idle on several different quads, and maybe it's just my deficiencies as a tuner, but I have never really been able to get it to work without causing problems, um, specifically low throttle instability and low throttle sort of oscillations. Some people say that they've fixed low throttle instability with this. I personally haven't had luck with it, and I don't actually use it, but you might, you might do better than me. There you go. 
Those are all the ways that I know of to deal with low throttle instability. In general, yes, but also specifically in Betaflight 4.2, where it seems to have popped up, although I was unable to reproduce it on the two quads that I tried to. I remember I put Betaflight 4.2 on a quad and I was like, this flight, you can go back, you can watch my Betaflight 4.2 test flight. I made a video and I was like, oh, this is flying pretty good. Oh, what's that? What's going on at low throttle? And then other people were like, yeah, there's something going on with Betaflight 4.2. Well, anyway, there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I have a whole Betaflight playlist. Uh, I'm going to put it down in the video description below, and you can check out all my other Betaflight tutorials if you're looking to learn about Betaflight. I also have a Patreon, and if you're learning a lot from my videos, I would love to have you as a patron for as little as $2 a month if you feel like you can spare it. Uh, I sure would appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. Hey, oh, one more thing. No, if you know of any ways to solve low throttle instability that I missed, I would love to hear about them. That's not just a YouTube engagement call to action. I would love to hear about them because I would like to know more ways to solve this particular problem. So let me know. Happy flying, you guys. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or... Like, just, here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.